This is my seventh video lesson for Unit 10. In this lesson, we'll be determining the rate law for a reaction. Go to page 29 in the class packet. Keep in mind, this topic is not on the chemistry regions exam. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I will be able to write and analyze rate laws. Homework be number seven. Kinetics is a study of how fast reactions are and the variables that affect a rearrangement of atoms and intermediates. So the unit for rate will be concentration per second. Concentration is represented using a bracket. For example, if a substance is in a bracket, it means the concentration of the substance. So here we have a chemical reaction. A plus B gives us C. A and B are reactants. C is the product. Rate laws are used to predict the relationship between the speed of the reaction and the concentration or pressure of the reactants. So here's our general rate law. The purpose of a rate law is to determine the rate of reaction from the concentration of the reactants. Now let's go over each variable of the rate law. The first ones are, R is the rate of reaction, highlighted red. The unit for rate is concentration per second. Next is concentration of reactants A and B, which are the reactants highlighted green. Order is highlighted blue, and rate constant K is highlighted purple. Order defines how change in concentration affect the rate of reaction. Order is the exponent of the reactant in the rate law. Order is determined by experimental data, not coefficients of the chemical equation, unless it is an elementary single-step reaction. The K value is a specific rate constant in the rate law. The K value is only for a specific reaction and is determined experimentally. K value becomes bigger if the temperature increases or a catalyst is added. Next, we're going to talk about different reaction order. First order is when the exponent is 1. Here, reactant A is first order. Sometimes one is invisible. So what does this mean? Let's look at some examples. Let's use the same reaction. So the K value will be constant. In trial one, if the concentration of A is one, the rate will be one because one raised to the one power is one. Let's say in trial two, we double the concentration of A. What will be the rate? The rate will be two raised to the first power, which is two. If we analyze trial 1 and 2, if the concentration of A is double, then the rate would double as well. Let's look at one more trial. Concentration of A is 3, which is 3 times the concentration of A in trial 1. Therefore, the rate will be 3 to the first power, which is 3. Now let's look at second order. In this rate law, reactant A is second order because the exponent is 2. Let's look at some example. Let's say in trial 1, reactant A has a concentration of 1. The rate will be 1 because 1 to the second power is 1. Let's say in trial 2, we double the concentration of A. What will be the rate? The rate will be 2 raised to the second power, which is 4. If we analyze trial 1 and 2, if concentration of A is double, then the rate will increase 4 times. Let's look at trial 3. Let's say the concentration of A is 3. What will be the rate? It will be 3 to the second power, which is 9. If we compare trial 1 and 3, if we triple the concentration, the rate will increase 9 times. Now let's look at zeroth order. So here's an example of a rate law in which reactant A is zeroth order. Anything to the zeroth power is 1. That is why we can leave out reactant A in the rate law equation. Reactant B is also zeroth order because it's left out in the rate law equation as well. So let's look at some examples. Let's say the concentration of A is 1 and the rate is 1 because 1 to the zero power is 1. Let's say in trial 2, we double the concentration of A. What will be the rate? It will be still be 1 because 2 to the zero power is 1. So what does this mean? By analyzing trial 1 and 2, it means if the concentration of A is double, then the rate remains the same. So in trial 3, if we triple the concentration of A in comparison to trial 1, the rate would still be 1. 
because 3 to the 0 power is 1. So when a reactant is at 0 order, no matter how much we increase it, it's not going to affect the rate. Learning check number 1, here we have two statements, statement 1 and statement 2. We have to determine if it's true or false. In statement 1, in a third order reaction with respect to x, when you double x, the rate increases 6 times because in statement 2, the rate equation is rate equals kx to the order of 3. Try to do this yourself. Pause the video. Resume is completed. So in the statement, it tells you it's a third order reaction. So statement 2 is showing a third order reaction because x has an exponent of 3. So statement 2 has to be true. So in statement 1, when you double x, does the rate increase by 6 times? 2 to the third power is 8, not 6. So statement 1 is wrong. So the answer is choice 2. So now I'm going to talk about reaction order. Reaction order is the sum of all the individual orders in the rate law equation. For example, here is our chemical equation. A, B, and C are the reactants. M and O are the order. So the reaction order for this reaction is we add up M, N, and O. So how do we determine the order in a rate law? Order is not equal to the coefficient in a multi-step reaction. But order is equal to coefficient in a single-step elementary reaction. We'll talk about single-step and multi-step reaction in the next lesson. So if the reaction is multi-step, then the order must be determined experimentally. So the question is, how do we know if a reaction is single-step or multi-step? Assume the reaction is multi-step unless stated otherwise. Here we're given a chemical reaction and its rate law. What is the order of NO? By looking at the rate law, it has exponent of 2. So the order is 2. The reaction order is also 2. In question 2, we're given a chemical reaction and its rate law, but this time we have two reactants. What is the order of NO2? By looking at the rate law, the order is 2. What's the order of CO? Notice that CO is not in this rate law, therefore it is 0. So the reaction order is 2 plus 0, which is 2. Question 3, a reaction in which A, B, and C react to form products, A is first order, B is second order, and C is zeroth order. Try to complete questions A to F by yourself. Pause the video. Resume is completed. Here are the answers. For the rest of the lesson, we'll focus on writing the rate law based on experimental data. So here we're given the chemical reaction, but we do not know if it's single step or multi step. Therefore, we're going to assume it's multi step. This reaction only has one reactant, HI. We're given the experimental data of this reaction, trial 1, 2, and 3. We're given the concentration of the reactant HI and the rate. To figure out the rate law, we need to analyze what happens to the rate when we change the concentration of the reactant. Let's focus on trial 1 and 2. Notice when the concentration of HI is double from 0.015 to 0.030, the rate quadruples. Therefore, the order of HI must be 2. So the rate law is equal to KHI second order. Let's say you want to solve for K. We just need to pick one trial and plug it in into the rate law. Let's say you pick trial 1, you take the experimental data in trial 1, and you plug it in into the rate law. Using algebra, we get k is equal to 4.9. It does not matter which trial you use because you will get the same k value. For example, if you take trials 2 experimental data and you plug it in into the rate law, you will get the same k value of 4.9. In question 2, our chemical reaction is A plus B gives us C. Notice we have two reactants this time. A and B. 
unless one of them is zero order, changing either of them will affect the rate. Therefore, to solve a question like this, you need to pick two trials in which one of the reactants is constant. Let's take trial 1 and 3. Because the concentration of B is constant, but the concentration of A is changing. It goes from 1.2 to 3.6. It triples. Notice what happens to the rate. It increases 9 times. Therefore, the order of A must be 2. To figure out the order of B, we need to pick two trials in which the concentration of A is constant. That will be trials 1 and 2. A is constant, but B is changing. From trial 2 to trial 1, B doubles from 1.2 to 2.4 the rate also doubles. Therefore, B have an order of 1. So here is the rate law. To solve for K, we're going to plug in one of the trials into the rate law. Let's plug in the experimental data of trial 1 into the rate law, and we get K as 2.3 times 10 to the negative 8. Learning check number 2, the chart contains experimental data obtained from the following reaction. What is the experimental rate law for this reaction? Pause the video. Resume is completed. Since there are two reactants in this chemical reaction, we need to pick two trials in which one of the reactants is constant. For example, trial 1 and 2, the concentration of H2 is constant, but the concentration of ICL triples. It goes from 0.2 to 0.6. The rate also triples. Therefore, the order of ICL must be 1. If we look at trial 2 and 3, concentration of ICL is constant. From trial 3 to trial 2, the concentration of H2 triples from 0.1 to 0.3. The rate increases 9 times. Therefore, the order of H2 must be 2. So the answer is choice 4. Try to do the rest of the questions by yourself. Pause the video. Resume once you want to see the answers. Here are the answers. This concludes the video lesson. Remember to do the homework.